Hey, what's going on guys, Arava here, and welcome back to my F1 2018 mod career mode, episode number 8 today for round number 9 at the Austrian Grand Prix of the 2018 Formula 1 season. There's a difference of the round to the episode number here, because obviously in the real life calendar, France would be the next Grand Prix. We had the Canadian Grand Prix for episode number 7. If you have missed that, by the way, be sure to go check that episode out before you see this one. Really crazy episode that was. Uh, you can clearly see it by the title and the thumbnail, but uh, yeah, so the next one would be France, but obviously being the 2017 game with the 2018 mod slapped on top of it. We're unable to go to two locations, which are France and Germany. So we're going to be skipping France out and going straight to Austria. So it's episode number eight, but it's round number nine here for the Austrian Grand Prix, the home to the Austrian drinks company, Red Bull. So they'll be hoping to go well. But it should be an interesting one for us, depending on how the tire wear and the strategy plays out. But uh, let's get into the starting grid then before we get on into the race. Right, so here we are then for the starting grid of round number nine of the 2018 Formula One season at the Austrian Grand Prix. And on pole position is Sebastian Vettel and a front row lockout for the Scooter rear in red with Kimi Raikkonen in second place then. So the Ferrari boys really improving on their one lap pace in this mod career with an upgrade for them coming to this episode. And the second row is all Mercedes and actually Noah's Ark style here for the top 10 really with Hamilton in third place, Valtteri Bottas in fourth. And then the entire third row is the Red Bulls of Daniel Ricciardo and Max Stappen. They'll be hoping to go a little bit better in the actual race and they may have better race pace depending on how their tire wear is and obviously we know from real life the Red Bulls could uh, play a bit more of an aggressive strategy and then the fourth row uh, making the kind of full Noah's Ark here in the fourth row is all Renault Nico Hulkenberg and Carlos Sainz in eighth place they're looking a lot better especially Carlos Sainz to be so close to his teammate compared to previous episodes then in ninth place is Romain Grosjean in the Haas and then ourselves in tenth place playing as Fernando Alonso in his McLaren Renault of course so we're going to have to start on the set of tires we've qualified on unfortunately for us but Kevin Magnussen He's right behind us in P11 and our team Essoffel Van Dorn in 12th place. So plenty of company there for the midfield fight and hopefully we can take the fight a little bit further on and not just look behind us. 13th place is Sergio Perez and Pierre Gasly does fantastically to be there in P14 ahead of Esmen Ocon and also to beat his teammate Brennan Hartley in P16 there. So the Tal Rosso's catching back up to Force India after dropping off a little bit last episode there and both of them kind of intertwined with the Force Indias. P17 then is the Russian Sergei Sorobkin in the Williams car. Charles Leclerc in P18 and then the last row of the grid surprise surprise is Mark Saracen and Lance Stroll to round out P20 ahead of the Austrian Grand Prix for 2018. So P10 on the grid, a little bit of an unfortunate spot really because we just miss out on having a free choice of tyres. So we have to start on a set of ultra soft tyres. Looking ahead to the strategy, then the two defaults being a one or two stop. But like I mentioned with the 2018 mod, uh, with the tyre wear many times this episode has been higher than we've seen in the normal base 2017 game as it should be with the softer Pirelli tyres this year. So uh, I'm going to go for the default two stop, two sets of ultras and one set of super softs. But we'll, as usual, see how it goes on the fly. But let's get straight into it then as we go to five red lines. For the Austrian Grand Prix, 36 laps ahead of us, and the Fiber Lights have gone out, and it's a good start for us compared to our fellow compatriot Carlos Sainz up ahead of us, and we're up into P8, then down the inside, and really big lunge, and a double lock up to try and stop us slamming into the back of both Red Bull cars, who have made both a poor starts there. Verstappen down to P7, and Ricardo P6. Then looks like Nico Hulkenberg has got a great start, and now he's chasing after actually a Ferrari there, or the the, the, the Mercedes car of Valtteri Bottas. We go down the inside of one and try and make it down the inside of two Red Bull cars, but we can only get Verstappen then, and we're having to tuck behind Dan Ricciardo. Meanwhile, Verstappen trying to go side by side with Carlos Sainz in the background as we do the same to Dan Ricciardo, trying to go around the outside of Danny Rick. We don't make it work. I actually made a bit of a mistake there. I tried to maybe cut back for a switchback move, essentially, and Ricciardo just had the pace on me at the apex, so we're going to have to wait patiently for lap number two now, and we're definitely gaining here down this back straight into the break zone, then trying to keep his tight as we can. Ricciardo with a double lock up there, and he's got a little bit wide. That invites the pass maybe on the right hand side we've got our nose in there so Ricardo has to give us the room and so can we try and make it round the outside it's going to be a bit of an arse the long way round and we're going to get shoved off on towards the curbing and there's a wheelie there's two wheelies and now Verstappen down the inside we've got some gravel on the tyres well, that's been an explosive little bit of action on lap number two literally double wheelie there on the curbs chucking us up as we tried to hang around the outside I said it was going to be difficult I didn't think it was going to be that difficult and a bit of an obstacle there let's take a look at a bit of a replay now off board. This is going to look pretty damn amazing. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Two wheelies. Bit of sparking there. And that looks pretty damn awesome. And the car looked like it was ready to take off into the distance. And that's for a reminiscent of the Mark Webber wheelie from China back in, I think it was 2012, if I remember correctly. Memory's a bit foggy there from a couple of years back now. But uh, quite spectacular stuff then 
for us already in the opening few laps of the Austrian Grand Prix and the action's going to continue now because the two Red Bulls are fighting Hammer and Tong so is this going to get a little bit juicy between the Red Bulls on lap four now obviously their technical home Grand Prix if you will with the Austrian drinks company sponsoring them so they're going to have to try and keep it clean and so that might invite us to make a pass and so we pull through on the right hand side to try and maybe overtake Ricardo second time lucky then look, look at that in the distance the Mercedes car he's off Bottas cuts across for Stappen and Bottas has been in the gravel and so that's drama there for the Finn the man who won the Canadian Grand Prix last episode now finds himself now battling the Stappen off and so that was a very odd incident it looked like Bottas completely got into the gravel like he was shoved off almost or had some sort of brake failure it wasn't just a, a, a case of one little tire dipped into the grass or anything like that as now we make a move down the inside finally in fifth gear shove Ricardo off a little bit and we squeeze him out quite aggressively but we ultimately had the car ahead of him completely so we're able to cut across him there and up into P7 and now we see Verstappen fighting Bottas who's obviously flustered after having that trip in the gravel and so now can we maybe uh, have a little of a cheeky pass on the fin perhaps let's see as we open up DRS get a bit of a traction issue so couldn't get the power down as fast as I wanted there but Bottas is looking pretty vulnerable here so we're going to try and make a pass in sector 2 if we can and as he uh, defends the inside line, we break a little bit early, try and straighten the car faster. It doesn't work out just like it did uh, before in the Grand Prix, so I didn't learn my lesson there. And so we have to uh, stay tucked up behind Bottas here and just unable to make it. You can see the dirty air kind of kicks in, and so we have to wait patiently now again till lap six. And now can we make a pass into turn one? We're going to dive. It's going to be close at the apex and actually just about make it there. A little bit of a skate into the apex and uh, opposite lock on the exit to make it happen. But uh, we're up into P6 and Bottas definitely didn't put up much of a fight into turn one that time round. And I I've seen plenty of times in previous uh, kind of career mode races around Austria. AI do definitely put up much, a much better fight into that corner. So Bottas definitely uh, got some sort of issue. You know, it's still unclear at what happened. And unfortunately, I don't have a replay to show you guys and to see what happened with Bottas. But whatever happened with him in the gravel definitely did hinder him. For, the, uh, for, for that little part of the Grand Prix at least. And so now on lap nine, we're into the pit stops now for our first stint. It's a little bit earlier than was actually scheduled on the strategy window, but I could see my Ultrasoft tires wearing out quite a bit faster than was obviously uh, kind of intended to with a 2018 mod here. So I feel like we can get a pretty good undercut and maybe try and get a lot closer to Verstappen uh, via the strategy because on pure pace in those last couple of laps after we passed Bottas, Verstappen actually had enough pace to kind of get away from us. So hopefully I can close up strategically in this way being on the soft tyres and that's another thing we swapped onto the softs rather than the super softs here because I want a bit more durability it's very clear to me that the tyre wear is going to be a big factor in this race so I need the durability of the soft tyres as uh, we now easily pass the Force India round the outside and uh, just trying to get through basically the gaggle of cars now that will inevitably be in front of us that are going longer in this Grand Prix that all started outside the top 10 you know the midfield runners and the back markers if you will but as I said we're not really racing these guys we're racing the Verstappen theoretically and uh, Bottas and, and Ricardo. so these guys are all just obstacles so we need to try and get past them in the kind of at uh, le uh, least time we can and not waste time and uh, dawdle with the passes and so we go down the inside then of the Russian in the Williams Sorokin and that was a little bit close on the apex there but we made it work and uh, definitely feeling the grip of the softs you know the the, the softs aren't very great ties for Austria they're not very good around here they don't feel very grippy but definitely compared to what I was feeling at the end of that ultra soft stint these tires are literally godly uh, godlike at the moment so uh, definitely uh, kind of thankful I came a little bit earlier this does mean that I'm gonna have to either go a little bit longer on these softs and then go into ultra soft or I might even have to think about uh, kind of using all three compounds and maybe going on to super softs in this race because I just don't think I can take these tyres that long to then warrant going for nine laps at the end on ultra soft tyres. But meanwhile, anyway, getting back to the action, we actually have a bit of trouble getting around Charles Leclerc. He puts up a decent fight in that Sal by Alfa Romeo. We go around the outside then, a bit of an unorthodox place to make a pass, but nonetheless, a very nice pass, actually. Uh, on the outside there, kind of just uh, you know, threading the needle, if you will, on the throttle to make that work. And then we catch up to Brennan Hartley in the Toro Rosso chasing after, I think that's uh, the other Sauber of uh, Marcus Ericsson. But we're on lap 12 and we yet to see any of the Red Bulls or, or even the Renaults. So I'm kind of uh, curious to see how far the AI can take these tyres and that might uh, kind of incline. Maybe they're going to do the default one stop that was on our strategy screen which will be interesting towards the race, uh, towards the end of the race, I should say. So here we go, though, making the move now on Harley, who gets tucked up and almost kind of rear ends Ericsson there. And we go into turn one, we do lose a bit of time. So this is not what we need 
having to go a little bit toe-to-toe -to -toe with Hartley and trying to squeeze him a little bit towards the left-hand side, just trying to scare him a little bit because I need to just get him out of the way and then we need to get back on the, on the back of Ericsson. So ideally, I wanted to pass Hartley into turn one cleanly, like get right past him into the apex and then pass Ericsson down that straight, but instead we had to do it. We had to finish the job on Hartley. Meanwhile, we've now got a yellow flag up ahead because of Stoffel van Dorn. My teammate is out of the Grand Prix, so that's not great for the championship for the constructors and yellow flags. I can't overtake Ericsson quite yet. Now it's green flags, and so we'll just get ahead. So a little bit annoying there as well. My teammate not helping me. Obviously, he's got his own issues being out of the Grand Prix, but uh, the, the timing of that yellow flag wasn't great because it meant for a few seconds I had to lift off and not pass Ericsson until we got to the green flag there. But unfortunate that Van Dorn's out of the Grand Prix so because he wasn't he, he already wasn't lifting his weight anyway in the championship, but that's not going to doubly help me now trying to fight the Red Bulls. Obviously, Red Bull got ahead of us in the constructors already now for the last two episodes, I think. But uh, obviously, I'm trying to do my best to drag the car up with Fernando Alonso. But uh, Van Dorn being at the Grand Prix is doubly not going to help that. But we go through turn one then on lap 14, and uh, we're up into P10. And now as we go towards lap 15 across the line, and quite a few cars now in the pit lane. So as we go through up into P7, this will be. And Hulkenberg in P6 is just coming out of the pits now. So we're just about going to overtake him then on lap 15 and up into P6. But you can see there, we have overtaken Hulkenberg with a big, big undercut. Because remember, he was ahead of Verstappen, you know, up in uh, what was P5 at the time. We're trying to chase after the top three of the two Ferraris and uh, Hamilton's Mercedes car. So we've done well to jump in. But you can see Verstappen on the top left is ahead of us. So Verstappen's remained ahead and both of us have jumped Hulkenberg. So really, uh, the, we, we really haven't gained too much action. Actually, it's just Holcomo that's lost out. Now we've got yellow flags. His virtual safety cars Pierre Gasly now is out of the Grand Prix. That's unfortunate for him after such a fabulous showing on Saturday qualifying. As we uh, resume the race, then green flags. I can say that also Kimi Raikkonen has gone out of this Grand Prix just as we're ending the virtual safety car. Now we go defensive with Holcomo, and Holcomo goes round the outside. He pinches us into the apex of turn one, and he's got 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 the move done. And we try and get some slipstream back, but actually, to my surprise, look at that. He just starts to pull away and away and away even when we're up into rich mix there. So that definitely did take me by some surprise seeing how Hulkenberg was so fast in a straight line. But I guess maybe that's why him and uh, Sainz both have had an improved qualifying uh, today for this episode. But uh, unfortunate for Kimi Raikkonen, who was right up there fighting uh, the top guys. Now he's out of the Grand Prix. And so it's just Sebastian Vettel and Lewis Hamilton will have to do some uh, some warfare for the lead of this Grand Prix and for the battle for the top two steps of the podium. And maybe Verstappen, you never know, could get in the mix there in P3. But now we move our attention back to Hulkenberg and this battle for P4. And a bit of a dummy move there. Fate to the left and go to the right down the inside into the hairpin. The end of sector one. It's going to be close. He's going to pinch us again into the apex. But we kind of deny that a little bit as halfway through we open up our steering wheel and the corner. And so we get up into P4 and behind actually swiftly. Ricardo looks like he's been a very opportunistic and he's overtaken Nico Hulkenberg as well. As we move on later into the Grand Prix, then we're going to look at this fight that I talked about between Sebastian Vettel and Hamilton and uh, Vettel fighting Hamilton at this stage of the Grand Prix. Still going strong on a second set of ultra soft tyres, so clearly doing a two-stop, whereas Hamilton is on soft tyres, so he may be going to the end of this Grand Prix on a very audacious one-stop, and looks like Hamilton now has the better pace, and he's able to pull it through uh, with DRS open as well, and he's ahead of the German, so uh, Vettel might be feeling a bit of tyre wear, so he he might want to come in pretty damn soon to make that two-stop work and it'll be interesting to see what tyre he goes on because of course that might help me out in deciding and so he does come in eventually later on a couple laps after that fight whereas Hamilton pulled away on soft tyre so Vettel's in and let's have a look at what tyre compound he's going to be on because this might help my decision here so on ultra soft tyres now and he goes on to a set of red super soft tyres so he's gone he's basically done the default two sets of ultras and one set of supers whereas I didn't feel as confident that I could pull that off so at the moment this is us in to turn one now, just ahead of Ricardo and Hulkenberg on a set of soft tyres, and like I mentioned, I might go on supers, and pretty much now was the time I'm thinking about coming to the pit lane on lap 23, and Vettel just came in the previous lap on 22 on lap 22, so that's kind of helped me out and informed my decision, and so we're going to copy him and go on to super soft tyres, so you can clearly see the difference though there is that Vettel on that Ferrari car was able to pull that through on two sets of ultras rather than ultra and soft, and so that Ferrari went till about lap 12, lap 13 on one set of ultras, went another 13 laps or 12 laps on another set of ultras and was able to make that work perfectly, whereas I had to come in all the way on lap 7 so much earlier 
but I just didn't have the tyre wear and I didn't have the pace for it. So, I don't know, maybe that Ferrari car is uber, uber kind on its tyres or, you know, Vettel's car, the Ferrari, just has so much pace that it counteracts any kind of tyre wear that I was probably feeling and that he probably was feeling too because that's in the mod. The tyre wear is higher in this mod for everyone, not just me. But the Ferrari car obviously is a lot better than my car. So I guess he just was able to make it work. And the offset delta time was just there for him. So now we have to contend with being down in our P10 at the moment. In the tail end of the points. Fighting back in this Grand Prix. Overtaking right now Kevin Magnussen. Sergio Perry is the next car up ahead in the Force India. So a couple of these guys may be coming in eventually. But just unfortunate again. Like the first stint we're getting kind of caught up in some traffic. And that's, I mean there's no one else to blame apart from me in terms of because I pit so early, I'm kind of a little bit out of sync with the entire grid in terms of when they're making their pit stops. And so now down the inside of the Mexican, it's close into turn one. And just like before with Brendan Hartley, I didn't need that. I needed a much easier pass into turn one. Probably should have gone around the outside of him and taken the racing line, but instead I chose the inside. And so we had to compromise our speed and scrub off some speed there. And so now onto lap 26, 10 laps to go, and we're only up into P8. And it doesn't look like these guys might even come in. And so I'm a little bit worried up ahead. You know, Ricardo and Hulkenberg, they were on soft tyres. They could easily be trying a one-stop like Hamilton is for the lead this Grand Prix. So that might just compromise my entire race in terms of, you know, it was looking like we were maybe fighting for P4. We might now be, fight, uh, be fighting just for P6 maybe, potentially, as now we overtake Grosjean there, and Carlos Sainz is the next car up the road. But then there's a huge gap you can clearly see in the mini-map where there's no dots, so there's no cars there, and so that's where I'm a little bit worried that... Holcomb and Ricardo aren't going to magically appear there after making a pit stop. But focusing on Carlos Sainz into the last corner. It's a lock up from the Spaniard and we have to lift off there and nearly, nearly uh, slam to the back of him and avoid a bit of contact. So I had to be right on my tiptoes to make sure I didn't uh, make contact with him. But now on the outside of turn one on lap 27, we get that eventually up into P6. But that was bloody, bloody close to Carlos Sainz. That could have been very nasty. So uh, unfortunate place for him to make a lock up there because that corner very much you're kind of rolling the car through anyway it's downhill so you take so much momentum up in, into that corner and so uh, yeah very lucky to avoid any contact but anyway we move further up the road and later into this Grand Prix and the two guys I was talking about are fighting away on soft tires right now Ricardo V Hulkenberg and the red car behind is Sebastian Vettel who's made that second pit stop along with me and so at the moment these two are fighting for P3 on the road but it soon will be P4 because you would think that Vettel eventually surely will get past these guys so at the moment it's Hamilton and Verstappen in second place and Vettel now is trying to get through this traffic essentially of Ricardo and Hulkenberg who are actually fighting hammer and tong really great scrap here they're still side by side and Ricardo just pushes Hulkenberg aside in the last corner but he might come back at him but Vettel is going to try and overtake his fellow German on the outside of turn one will he get that done it's going to be close and there's a bit of contact I think a bit of a wiggle there from both cars but Vettel has got that and so now he can try and get on the back of Dan Ricardo. but uh, yeah you can see that these two because they're fighting so hard I don't think they have any plans to pit again so I think unfortunately that's pretty much the end of my fighting for this race unless these guys really suffer major major tyre wear which is still a possibility so you never know let's cross our fingers but uh, Vettel was going to get past Ricardo then but Ricardo is going to keep on battling not Vettel it's going to be Hulkenberg and Hulkenberg has got a plan to go down the inside of him into turn one and so these two continue to scrap so if these two continue to fight like this and they start to you know they start to have a lot of tyre wear at the end of this Grand Prix we still might have a chance so you know go on Hulkenberg and Ricardo please do scrap some more for a few more laps but apart from that I don't have many uh, hopes and then in P2 at the moment is Max Verstappen and then P1 is Lewis Hamilton so Hamilton out of nowhere is looking very comfortable in this Grand Prix after in qualifying you wouldn't have said that you would have uh, you would have thought that the Ferraris had this in the bag but just like we've seen a couple of times in this career mode mod series anyway the, the race pace has been a little bit different to what the qualifying pace is in there it's kind of juggling everything up quite uh, quite nicely nicely because obviously Bottas was there last race has been kind of Vettel and Raikkonen show in the first few episodes and so it keeps the championship very very close uh, for us though meanwhile on lap 36 you can see now coming through uh, yellow flags as one other car parks up there I think that's uh, the other Toro Rosso potentially as you go through the last corner then 16 runners so a bit of a bloodbath here Austria 
and we're going to come through in P6. So, a bit of a frustrating one, because uh, P4 was in our hands, actually, and we kind of threw it away with the strategy, but we committed so early due to how fast the ultra soft tyres wore out that I had no idea that was going to happen in this Grand Prix, and the, suit and the soft tyres definitely weren't going the distance for me, uh, considering I pitted probably about five laps earlier than most of these guys that had made the one stop work, so, uh, so it's really a case of the AI were just simply better than me this episode, especially on the tyre wear front. Uh, they were just so much more consistent, especially on the ultra soft tyres at the beginning of this Grand Prix, but yeah, with Hamilton getting a uh, with the first place, then Verstappen in second, that's going to be very good for them, uh, for him and Red Bull, obviously in the constructors against us, and then trying to catch Ferrari and Mercedes, but for the driver championship, that's, that will ultimate things very close between Bottas, Hamilton, uh, Vettel, and Raikkonen, but as we look on then to the full race results, and obviously we know the top three, and Ricardo then in uh, P4, Nico Hogberg in P5 doing a good job, we're there in P6, Bottas comes through in P7 after an early struggle, and Carlos Sainz gets P8, so all in all, a strong showing for the Renault guys this time around. Obviously, they've gotten very unlucky so far in this season. Uh, from last episode, they uh, scored some good points in this episode. Now, they have double point scoring position, so good for them. And then rounds out Roman Grosjean and Sergio Perez. But in the Drivers' Championship then, Sebastian Vettel still leads the way, but by just one point to Lewis Hamilton then. So, uber close in this championship. Bottas, the, the race winner in Canada, moves down to third place then with 116 points. Ricardo P4, Raikkonen in P5, so Ricardo does well to jump Raikkonen, we're still ahead of Max Verstappen then, but Hulkenberg now finds himself in the top 11, uh, sandwiched between the two Haskars, and then constructors wise, not much changes with the order, but points wise, you can see Ferrari a little bit away from Mercedes, Red Bull trying to chase after, but the big points uh, swing obviously is Renault, that are now only a couple of four points behind Haas F1, so I think that'll be the next big fight for the next episode, P5, P6, Haas and Renault, but guys, if you have enjoyed that episode, smash that like button. Let's try and get over 1,000 likes if we can, guys. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you aren't around here, do get subscribed for weekly fall-on content. I've been Arava. Hope you enjoyed the rest of your day, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.